The Anglo-Saxon ship burial at Sutton Hoo is one of the most iconic excavations in British archaeology. The finds were so rich that it contributed to a reimagining of the so-called Dark Ages in British history. Um, I think it just says you're connecting to audio at the moment. Yes, I can. I'm calling Martin Carver, Emeritus Archaeology Professor at the University of York. So Sutton Hoo was discovered in 1938-39, excavated the uh, finds of Bar in Barn 1, there was about 250 finds or something like that from the burial chamber, all reconstructed, except one, and that was the ship. Martin is the chairman of the Sutton Hoo Ships Company. They're undertaking a task that has never been completed before, reconstructing the ship uncovered at Sutton Hoo. What was left of the ship was no timber. It was just a, a stain in the sand with the black lines showing where the edges of the timbers was. And then rows and rows of iron rivets that had rusted into little lumps. So although the wood had gone, actually the preservation of the form of the ship was really quite good. So we digitally modelled it and used that as a basic sort of blueprint. I mean, it's a scientific project, but it's not done in the usual privacy of the lab. You know, this is like a public place on the waterfront in Woodbridge, great big shed. Until you see it, you can't imagine it. There's nothing very impressive about a set of stains, but there's a hell of an impression once you visit the ship. So I've taken Martin's advice and travelled to Suffolk to visit the ship and the volunteers working on it. So I'm here at the lovely setting of Woodbridge and I'm taking a look at the ship that they're currently building. My name is Philip Waring and I'm a volunteer for the, for the ship's crew. Could you describe to me what it is that you're doing at the moment? Well, this piece of oak was split using wedges into eighths and now I'm reducing that, something that started as that, down to a board that will go on the ship. Not only are the volunteers recreating the ship from Sutton Hoo, they're also having to learn Anglo-Saxon construction techniques along the way. What I didn't realise before I came here was that the Anglo-Saxons didn't have uh, saws um, and so everything has to be shaped using an axe like this. This is what's called a finishing axe and it's got a, quite a short handle but you might see that it's not straight on the uh, iron part of the blade so that you can actually finish a piece of timber without bashing your knuckles on the timber that you're working on every time you take a blow. So you've built boats yourself. Yeah. What's the difference between what you're doing now and, and your well, boat building previously? Size, size largely size. The, the like size that. of this boat, what, what is the current dimensions? She's 96 feet long. Um, she's the size of one of the biggest of the Thames sailing barges, for instance, um, the length, but of course, much lighter. And the differences don't stop there. The team at Woodbridge have a wealth of resources for their reconstruction, digital models, physical models, and drawings. The Anglo-Saxons would have never built the same ship twice, instead working with the natural shape of the wood, relying on intuition. I'm with shipwright Tim Kirk, who oversees this side of the project. There's obviously the ship to my left, which is what they're currently working on. To my right, there's something that uh, looks a little bit more modern. Would you be able to explain to me what this is? This is a full-scale model of the middle part of the ship. That's about four metres long. And we've built it for a number of reasons. Partly it's an experimental tool to work out interior layout. Because all the timber had rotted away, the whole of the interior of the ship is missing. So we're having to reverse engineer that purely from um, the outline that was in the archaeology of the tholes. Now the tholes are the equivalent of what we would call today a rollet. So it's what the, oar, the oars pull on. And they are like hooks sitting on the side of the ship that the oars sit into and pull against. And so from that, because enough cemeteries have been excavated now, 
that we know roughly that the Saxons were of a similar size to us and so we can use the knowledge of the location of the tholes and their sizes or our sizes to then look at where the thwart would be the seat in a fore and aft position relative to the tholes and from that we can then set out a floor height in the ship and so we can then begin to look at the interior framing and how that's all fitted it's all coming from that one piece of crucial information this is archaeological and engineering detective work but jack bernard project manager for the ship's company oversees another side of the experimentation actually rowing the boat we're engaging a group of known local known rowers um, to help us with a lot of the research and to try and hit the ground running if you like when we first start the rowing um, so these people will help experiment and you know we may even put this midship model in the water with everybody in their swimming costumes because um, we know obviously it's not watertight it will be sitting in the mud but it might give us an, an opportunity to just to feel what it's going to be like to draw an oar through the water using one of these thole things as a pivot. Um, so, you know, just, just experimenting. It's all experimental what we're doing. This project then will be going on for years to come. Eventually, ideally, it would either be, it will be rowed, potentially sailed. What are you looking forward to most? For me, um, that that first day when we put it on the water and we get that first chance to move it from one point to another. It just feels incredible to think that, you know, way back in time there would have been 40 Anglo-Saxons sat in each one of those rowing positions and manoeuvring it along the River Deben and that we can do the same in 2024, hopefully. You know, just to be part of that history will be incredible. And those first voyages on our waterways will bring the so-called Dark Ages into the light. We set off on these big voyages and, and used the ship as a kind of icon for lots of different kinds of people to get together. Everybody's allowed to look at a ship and so I'm hoping it'll have a sort of bonding effect but also I think it'll give a lot of pleasure to a lot of people.